channel, Health Layer Dr. Vero. So before we get started, I just wanted to see how you guys were doing. How was your weekend? Are you guys getting ready for the holidays? I know I am and I'm so excited. So today I decided to talk about a topic that I think is actually pretty important, especially for our youth, HPV. What is HPV? Is there a vaccine for it? Should you give it to your kids? Is it safe? When should you give it? Why is HPV so dangerous? What can it cause? Are there symptoms? Is there anything you can do? So that is what we're gonna get into today. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so HPV, what is it? It is short for human papillomavirus. So yes, it is a virus that is sexually transmitted. Uh, but it's not just through intercourse. It is also through oral sex and anal sex. So it's not just vaginal sex that can cause uh, a risk of having this virus or you know passing it along. There's other types of transmissions as well. There's also skin to skin. So HPV is a virus that is basically a combination of 150 different kinds of viruses. Uh, they all they're all given a number. Uh, the most commonly known are 6 and 11, which are the ones that are known to cause genital warts. Uh, then you have 16 and 18, which are the two most common that cause cervical cancer. There are two others that are also high risk of cancer, which is 31, 45, but there are a bunch of others. There are vaccines out there. Gardasil is one of them. Uh, Cervarix is another one. Gardasil 9 actually protects against nine of them. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about why this is an important topic, uh, what are some of the risk factors for you to have cervical cancer and HPV infection, and who's at risk and what we can do to protect our kids. Now, HPV is something that, yes, like I said, it is one of the most common sexually transmitted infections that can cause cervical cancer in women, 85% actually. Uh, and it can also cause anal cancer, it can cause penile cancer, vulva cancer, um, cancer of the vagina, cancer of the back of the throat, your tonsils, and the bottom of your tongue. So it is definitely a virus that can lead to cancer formation and growth. And this is a huge problem. Uh, so what is it that you can do to protect your kids against cancer? So some of the risk factors for HPV is having multiple sexual partners. And specifically, multiple sexual partners without protection. So if you use a condom, you protect yourself from getting this virus. However, the problem is that HPV can be transmitted with just one sexual encounter. So the vaccine is recommended to be given between the ages of 9 and 14, mostly 11 and 12 years old because you know it is said that after the age of 13 you are more likely to expose yourself to sex and intercourse and get more exposed to the virus. So before this age is when they recommend that you should be giving the vaccine. Recommendations are two doses of the vaccine 12 months apart. Now, if your teen or your adolescent gets the vaccine and they get both doses with less than five months between them, they recommend a third dose. So should you vaccinate your kids? I strongly believe that you should. I am 100% for vaccinations and all kinds of vaccines, including the flu shot. And a lot of you might find this a little bit controversial. I know that vaccines and what's in the vaccines is something a lot of people have issues you know, accepting and issues giving it to their children. So obviously speak to your doctors, ask them questions, ask them the benefits, why it's important. Obviously cervical cancer is a huge problem here in the US, which is why we do that pap smear, which is short for Papa Nicolau smear. Uh, to screen for the HPV infection. Uh, so this is something that obviously has now become part of medicine as a whole. Every three years you get a pap smear or you can get a pap smear and the test for HPV itself and then you can go five years without getting another test. Uh, so obviously with all these recommendations nowadays with the CDC, the NIH, and with the cancer screening, it's a really important topic to discuss and an important topic to bring up in conversation with your doctors uh, and your OBGYNs. Now, I know that this is something like, hey, my kids aren't having sex at 11 years old, why am I gonna vaccinate my child? Well, here's the thing, your child may not be sexually active yet, but when he turns or she turns 14, 15, 16, high school, college comes around, the fact that you've given them the vaccine and now protects them against these different types of viruses, 16 and 18, that can cause cervical cancer. So if there's something you can do to prevent a cancer in your child, my opinion is, why wouldn't you consider doing it? Um, it's just one shot, so side effects. What are the side effects of the shot? 
Very similar to all other shots. Some redness, some pain, some swelling in the area of the shot. Some people say that they feel a little bit dizzy and they feel like throwing up, they feel nausea. Others have passed out after they get the shot and then they come back and then that's the worst, but that's super rare. Um, so adverse effects, yes, obviously some pain. Uh, protection is a huge benefit from, uh, from the vaccine. Now, what is in the vaccine? There's a whole bunch of components in the vaccine. Is it a virus? Is it, a, is it alive? Is it dead? No, it is not. It is not alive. It is not dead. It is no virus. There is no virus in this vaccine. No live virus, no killed virus, nothing. What is there is a protein that mimics the outer layer of the HPV virus. That is all you are doing. It is a protein that looks just like the actual thing, but it has nothing to do with the actual virus. You are not getting a virus injected into your arm. Not alive, not dead, no virus whatsoever. No, no, no. Okay, what else is in there? You have L-histidine, which is something that's natural in your body as well. Some aluminum, and all of these things are meant to stabilize and protect the vaccine you know, from denaturing and for it actually to be stable enough to give the actual effect it's meant to give. Now, there is something in the vaccine called borax, and borax is something that is present in cosmetics, in detergents, in a whole bunch of things that a lot of you may think, I'm not putting that in my arm or my kid's arm or no one else's arm. That's dangerous and it's toxic and it's noxious and it's cancerous. Well, actually, a study was conducted and in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, it showed that the amount of borax is so low that it is not enough to get into the bloodstream and cause negative adverse effects. So there is that one hint, you know, that it can give you a little peace of mind that no, you are not injecting a carcinogen into your child's arm. All you're doing is preventing cancer. And I have met many, many families with children with bone cancer, with cancer in the brain, with cancer in their blood, leukemia, and a whole bunch of other things. And to be completely honest, if there had been some Something that they could give their children to protect them from getting cancer, I guarantee you they would have done it. Um, so this is something to consider. Uh, obviously it's a very serious topic for a lot of people because they have themselves either gotten cervical cancer. Um, cervical cancer also leads to a whole bunch of other things. It can spread, metastasize, it can go somewhere else. Um, the problem is that even if it doesn't metastasize and it is found early, Sometimes they cut out a piece of the cervix that has the cancerous area and then they remove it and they leave the rest of the cervix that is healthy intact. Now, some of the adverse effects of that is when you get pregnant and you are having a baby and the baby keeps growing and growing and growing, you will have a possibility that your cervix will not be strong enough to keep closed long enough for your baby to mature properly. So what happens is they now need something called a cerclage, which basically shuts the cervix closed during the rest of the pregnancy to prevent uh, a miscarriage, essentially. Uh, so these are some of the adverse effects of uh, HPV. Obviously, I'm sure you guys have tons of questions about this because it is something that was pretty recent. Even though a lot of you may already know about it, it is something that is also just starting to get a little bit more power in the media. Okay, so that's about it for today. Uh, I don't actually have any more on HPV unless if I for some reason forgot something and there's something you really wanna know about, you can go ahead and leave a comment below. But while I say goodbye to you, I thought I would close today with a nice cup of coffee. Let me pull it over. Okay, so as you can see, I have this really nice little setup for my coffee. And I do wanna say that I was lucky enough to receive uh, Java Babe coffee. It burns and boosts. It's basically to boost your metabolism. It has Garcinia Cambogia, which I talked about in one of my previous episodes uh, about how it boosts your metabolism. It is a coffee replacement. So yes, it has caffeine, but it is delicious and it'll boost your metabolism, makes you feel really good. I've been drinking it for you know about a week now and I think it's delicious. So I'm gonna just pour myself a cup right now. Uh, just to mention, I use Truvia sugar. I don't use any other sugar. I use brown sugar if I'm not at home. Okay, so now I'm gonna have, you know, serve myself some coffee while I finish my chat with you guys. Uh, so I know that the holidays are coming for many of you and you must be super excited. I've actually mentioned uh, on my previous episodes a 
if you guys would like to come along with me shopping. Uh, I have gotten a few responses. It seems like most of you do want to come along. Uh, but you can go right ahead and let me know below if you also think that you would like to come with me shopping. Follow me on Instagram so you can see all my stories. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And hey, I don't know what time it is where you are, but where I'm at, it's coffee time. So I'll see you guys later. Bye!